Hey everyone, as a 46 here, welcome back to Stationeers. In today's episode, we're going to be upgrading our furnace situation downstairs, and I'm going to show you how this system here works. So it's pretty much the same system as outside, but it, instead of going from outside into the base, it goes through here, down here, and it kicks up at a junction here, and it goes straight into this. So that makes it much easier to um, insert ores from inside the base, instead of having to go outside. So, I'll just put this away really quick. Weld it back up as well. Okay, so in a previous episode, we um, automated this with a computer, but the computer didn't do a very good job and it was using a lot of power. So we've got a better way to do it now. What we're gonna use is logic processor and three kit IOs, logic IO kits, so not the kit IO. So we get the processor here. Power, low. We want to get compare chip. I'm just going to duck upstairs really quick and get a new battery because the power is low. There we go. And we have all new power. What we want is logic reader, two logic readers, and then a logic writer. Just like that. So now we want to go ahead and uh, let's notice this is backwards. What you gotta do is when you paste these, you make sure they actually touch the cables. So you just gotta rotate that like that. Make sure they rotate them right. There we go. Logic writer, there we go. So we grab our screwdriver out like this. This one's gonna be comparing. What's a compare chip? What it's gonna compare is. You could turn these on, obviously. So we want the first device to be. The auto smelter, which is this, and then for this one we want the auto uh, auto smelter as well. So they're both using the auto smelter, but they're going to be comparing different uh, variables. But this one is going to be go to import slot occupied, and this one will be export slot occupied, just like that. So now what's going to happen is that's uh, an auto save lag spike. So what's going to happen is, this chip's going to compare these two chips. So if there's an item in both of those, it will stop the uh, furnace. But if there's a, a difference in them, then it will start. Which is a 99% case, it will work. So, And we're going to rotate this around because power's on the other side. Yep, that'll work. What about you? No. It worked, but... Okay, we need more batteries in the drill. Drill runs out of battery really, really quick for some reason. Not sure why. I'm forever replacing the batteries on it. So what I've done is we've placed the drill the wrong way so it doesn't have power. Because power's directly on this side, not on this side. So we've just got to rotate this around. Yep, now power's on this side as you can see. So get the screwdriver again. We want to compare, before we compare we want to label these, so we know exactly which one's which. Logic, we'll name it Logic Radar, um, Furnace. Logic Radar 1 and 2. And what we're going to do is turn this machine off, put it back away. So we can compare, number 1. Number, whoop, number two, number one, two. We want to do not equals. So when they don't equal each other, that's when we want it. Um, so we want to output to this chip. So if you go to this chip and we go to the input, input will be logic compare, which is that one. And then we want to go to the furnace again, auto smelter, and the output will be active. So that's that's all it is, it's that simple. The hardest part is getting the rotations right, but that was just a mistake I did. So what we can do now is we can go and test it with some ore. So I'll be right back once I got some ore and we'll test it. Okay guys, we're back. We have some iron ore here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split it into ones, just like this, a few times. So we can grab the two ones like that. So for this chip to work, it has to be connected up to power, of course, but it's no problem. 
So we insert one, pull the lever, insert the next one, pull the lever, and in a few seconds it should spit out two ingots, if it worked. One, two. So as you can see it definitely works. I'll put some more in, like this. And we'll go downstairs really quick and we should see it uh, turn it on the furnace. And as you can see the furnace is on. Let's pulse it really quickly. And then it just shoots it back upstairs. That's a fully working, fully working automated furnace using logic gates. It's a very simple build, it makes the um, furnace much more usable. You never have to see the furnace ever. You can even split it to multiple furnaces if you uh, would like that. So you can split like half for, half for iron and half for gold, something like that. But I reckon our system is perfectly good for what it does. We don't need it to do more because it's perfectly fine for our use case. So unfortunately this is going to be a short episode today. I may or may not release another episode today that is that will go over um, a battery backup system and a uh, backup generator system. So my idea would be instead of having, I'll just go up on the roof, instead of having these two batteries here like this, there will be a battery um, room for example over here. It will have a whole bunch of fancy gauges on it, uh, signs that tell us our usage statistics. It will have a battery percentage, and it will also have a backup battery, I mean a backup generator, old generator, like this one. It will automatically turn on if our battery packs get too low. So if we have upgraded our base and we don't upgrade our solar panel at the same rate, the um, generator will turn on if there's too much, there's not enough power, and it will save us until the next day, and then we'll know that it will need more solar panels. So I'm planning to put that roughly in this gap here maybe. We're probably going to even get more batteries as well. I'm thinking between 4 and 6 backup batteries. So there'll be lots and lots of storage. Lots and lots of battery storage. Um, so we can make our base pretty pretty big. So I thank you guys for watching this episode. Fortunately it's a short one. So I have to sign off right here. If you enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like uh, below the video. If you have any suggestions, feedback or any tips or anything like that. Make sure you leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this content and you'd like to see more in the future, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.